We know the instigator in a fight in the last five minutes of a game is supposed to come with an automatic one-game suspension. And we know the league waived it, but why? Here's Pierre Lebrun to tell us that. Pierre, what went into the league's call to rescind the suspension? Yeah, I mean, Gino, number one, yes, it comes with an automatic one-game suspension. It also comes with an automatic review by the league, which I think is the part that sometimes uh, confuses people. Uh, there were people online saying, well, the senators need to appeal or have appeal. Actually, the rule says they can't appeal. It's an automatic review by the league. Let me read you rule 4621 <laughs> in the NHL rule book because I had to reread it myself today. A player who is deemed to be the instigator of an altercation in the final five minutes of regulation time or, or an overtime shall be suspended for one game pending a review of the incident. So, again, automatic. Uh, within the one game suspension is imposed, the coach also should be fined ten thousand uh, dollars. Blah blah blah. The suspension shall be served unless, upon review of the incident uh, by the director of hockey operations, which actually I'm told has been changed. So that used to be Colin Campbell, director of operations. It's now George Perros, uh, player safety, that does the review for this. Um, if at his discretion deems the incident is not related to the score, previous incidents in the game or prior games, retali retaliatory in nature or message sending, etc., the length and suspension will double for every subsequent offense, but also can also be rescinded. And so in this case, you know, what was explained to me on this day is that George Paris looked at it and said, this isn't message sending. This isn't, you know, predatory. Um, this was a heat of the moment fight between two guys. And so they rescinded the one game suspension. So it, it's important to know that because had he been suspended one game, of course, you start to clock on other uh, potential, um, you know, incidents of this nature going forward. Going right to the source with our hockey insider, Pierre Lebrun, with the explanation. Still lots more to discuss on the Sens. To do that, I'm now joined in studio by Frankie Corrado and Craig Button also joins the conversation from Calgary. Frankie, what do you think of the league's decision to let Kachuk off the hook? It's the right decision. Brady Kachuk is not going out there instigating anything. He didn't bully someone into a fight that wasn't a willing combatant. Alex Tuck went out. He actually got an interference call on Brady Kachuk in the moment. It was a greasy hit. And you need to understand that if you're going to go after a player that's willing to drop the gloves with you, that's what you open the door to. And Alex Tuck opened that door. Brady Kachuk slammed it open with that <laughs> fight. And he shouldn't have gotten an instigator suspension. It wasn't an instigator situation. It's exactly as you laid it out, Frankie. And, you know, when Alex Tuck goes and delivers that type of play on Brady Kachuk, number one, you better know who you're doing it against. And number two, you better expect that Brady Kachuk isn't going to take it literally laying down. So the NHL absolutely made the right decision in rescinding uh, the instigator penalty because it doesn't meet any of the criteria for the instigator penalty. Couldn't agree with you guys more. And now... Also from that situation, Kachuk's end of coming fight wasn't the only viral moment from Wednesday's game. The crowd in Ottawa was also heard chanting fire DJ in reference to sense coach DJ Smith. Craig, what do you think of the fans blaming their coach right now? Well, we saw it last year in New Jersey after two games, and we saw what the yeah. New Jersey Devils yeah. did the rest of the year. So maybe, maybe it's the Ottawa Senators fans' way to get the team going, all kidding aside. I don't think that the issue is with DJ Smith at all. I have seen measurable improvements in their defensive play. In fact, they're really, really strong this year, and that's coaching. The problem with the Ottawa Senators at this point in the season has been the goaltending. And we all looked at it as an improvement with the tandem of Corpus Salo and Forsberg. At this point in time, it hasn't been. They're only 3-3. Three and three. The last two games haven't looked pretty. But when I look at the areas where the team needed to improve, they have definitely done that. Yeah. And that's a credit to D.J. Smith. Well, and Craig, you bring up a few good points there. The fact that you mentioned that they are a better team defensively. The evidence is there. When you look around the National Hockey League, the Ottawa Senators are first in the NHL at preventing shots on goal. They're first in the NHL at preventing high danger scoring chances. So, no, you can't blame the coach when the goaltender can't make a save for you. And that's exactly what's going on with the Ottawa Senators. Not to mention, they're filling the back of the net right now. They're fourth in the NHL in goal scored. So, it's not an issue as far as X's and O's and execution. They can't get a, get a save right now, and that's not DJ Smith's fault.